It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. On Sunday, Austrians narrowly, meaning by 0.6%, elected Alexander van der Bellen as Austria's new president, defeating the far-right candidate Norbert Hofer of the FPO party. Van der Bellen ran as an independent, but is a former president of the country's Green Party. This was the first time in post-war Austria that neither of the leading candidates running for president came from one of the two long dominant parties, the Christian Democrats or the Social Democrats. All major parties endorsed van den Bellen in order to prevent the election of Norbert Hofer. The FPO is notoriously anti-immigrant, homophobic, and anti-EU. On to discuss these developments is Walter Bayer. He is an economist in Vienna and was national chairperson of the Communist Party of Austria, the KPO, and uh, he did that from 1994 to 2006. He was an editor of the Austrian weekly Volkssteimer, from 2007 onwards and has been a coordinator of the network to transform Europe. Thank you so much for joining us, Walter. Hi, Shamani. Nice to be with you. First of all, Walter, how did Austrians end up choosing between a far right candidate and a left green candidate? Well, as you mentioned, uh, first of all, uh, it reveals the deep crisis of the political system which traditionally has been represented by the Social Democratic Party and the, the People's Party. And uh, this political crisis uh, itself is uh, the reflection of uh, the economic and social crisis uh, which uh, affects Austria since 2007, 2008. And there is, of course, much frustration and much disappointed people feel betrayed by the major parties. And that is basically the, the reason for the amazing, uh, amazing rise uh, of the far right, the, 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 the FPÖ. And you can imagine that uh, we are quite relieved that in the very last moment, uh, the Green candidate, Van der Bellen, managed uh, to uh, to surpass uh, the candidate of the far right. However, what remains true and, uh, and, and what is alarming is the fact uh, that practically a half of the Austrian population voted for the candidate of uh, an extremely reactionary, nationalist, xenophobic, and anti-immigrant party. So uh, the, the, the thrill is not over yet. We must be prepared to uh, dramatic uh, times to come. And uh, what led to this? Uh, this was a runoff, uh, and then all of the parties that were uh, center democratic parties to far left parties all had just collapsed their support to get Van der Bellen elected. Uh, give us a sense of what happened prior to this election, which was during the runoff election. Well, uh, it is uh, not exactly true that uh, the the formerly major parties, the Austrian People's Party, which is the conservative Christian Democratic Party, and the Social Democratic Party, outspokenly supported Van der Bellen. Uh, as a matter of fact, both parties um, try uh, to find ways uh, even to uh, uh, coalesce with the far right. The Social Democrats do so, for example, in the region of Burgenland, in which they form a coalition government with the far-right party. So the parties themselves refrained from, from calling to support Van der Bellen. What is true is Austrian civil society mobilized and and uh, yes, indeed, the, the the political establishment or, or the the I would say the the responsible part of the political uh, establishment endorsed uh, Van der Bellen in the last weeks, but uh, the political parties, as such, uh, were not able to take uh, this decision, which obviously uh, what would have been necessary or was necessary in order to um, prevent uh, the far right from um, uh, 
getting the, the becoming uh, head of the state. In, in the and country. to what extent, Walter, did the refugee crisis exasperate the political polarization in the country? Well, the, the, yeah, I mean, uh, in a strict sense, I, I, I would not uh, talk about the refugee crisis because it's ridiculous uh, to call uh, 18, 80,000 people who uh, seek asylum in Austria uh, a, a crisis or, or think that they provoke a crisis. Um, the crisis consists in that neither the European Union nor the main political forces in Austria were able to manage uh, the uh, arrival of uh, this number of people. But uh, please uh, remember in 1956, after the Hungarian Revolution, 120,000 refugees from Hungary uh, came over the borders and were received uh, in, a, uh, welcome, uh, in a welcoming way. And the same applied then in 1968, um, after the um, invasion of the Warsaw Pact Treaty States in Czechoslovakia. So the, the, the mismanagement of of the arrival of the refugees, this is a signifies a political crisis and not a, a crisis as such. But what is true is that this accelerated the process of polarization. But uh, all surveys, by the way, um, also on the European level show uh, that the fear of um, losing cultural identity, even Islamophobia, are not the major driving forces between this shift to the right. This has to do with disappointment about democracy. This has to do with a fear of social downward uh, mobility uh, of the middle strata. This has to do with uh, the uh, broadly spread uh, impression of people that the ruling parties do not represent them anymore. And as in Austria, um, there is no uh, radical left political alternative able to take up uh, the demands and the hopes and the fears of the people. It's uh, m more or less um, uh, likely, and that is what, what is happening, that this uh, frustration is articulated uh, by this far-right party. All right, that's uh, very concerning for uh, many Europeans, this uh, recent surge of uh, the right-wing parties in Europe. And so we're going to take that issue up in our next segment. Uh, Walter, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, pleasure being with you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.